this is a really good win for us, and I think uh, I think later in the season we'll see how good a win it is for us because I, I I've said this week I feel like this is Tim's most complete team. Um, they're very disruptive uh, defensively with their length uh, and, and their size in particular. Uh, you know, we haven't turned it over ten times and a half very often in eight years, and you know part of that was us being in a hurry, but part of it was certainly. Uh, they were a little bit tougher than us, and <coughs> you know our our plan was to try to keep them out of the paint. And to their credit, they hit five threes right away and got off to that good start. But um, f honestly, I felt fortunate to only be down five uh, with ten turnovers and as bad as we shot free throws. I thought we were in as about as good a place at halftime as we could possibly be. And then uh, they only scored on four of their first fifteen to start the second half possession wise, and that allowed us to to get back in the game, take the lead, and get our crowd into the game, which was obviously huge for us today. Best first two and a half weeks for us. Coach Fitz, what, what did they do to kind of <coughs> help them want to eventually find um, what was going to be a lead in this game? Um, you know, the game plan for us was to attack the basket. And you know, early on in the game, in the first half, they were really clogging the paint. <coughs> and I was. I was held, holding the ball too long when I was getting in the paint. In the second half, I really just slowed down and you know just tried to get my, make my reads and get to my right spots. You know, you know I got great teammates around me, and I know everybody else is they're they're gonna have uh, a lot of eyes on them because how good they've been playing this season. So you know I just tried to settle in and get easy layups going <coughs> into the second half. What was your reaction when they out of timeout they went one three one then showing that zone all day? Um, yeah, I was I was definitely surprised to see that. And you know, I just I just seen it out of the first play that spot I had, and I knew I could have shoot it. So I was just waiting until Taz got it again, and he set it up and gave me a great pass, and I knocked it down. Did you feel at all like the Northwestern game maybe it was you know, a slow start offensively? You probably would have, you know, not in any kind of rhythm whatsoever, but you know, coming down the crunch time, you were there to make a play. Um, yeah, that was the exact feel for me. You know, I just couldn't get a rhythm in that first half, and the same feeling of Northwestern, but. <laughs> You know, something that Coach Mack has been telling me over and over, you know, just be calm and be patient and everything's going to go your way, you know. Big thing he told me was get it done on defense and then I, I don't feel my talk was as, good, as as loud as it usually is on defense. And I picked it up in the second half and it got me going on offense again. This is one more Marcus. You against Baylor. I don't know. It was a grinded out game and obviously you, you want to be, you're the go-to guy. You know, <coughs> Something that you took away from that game, that way it finished, that maybe applied to today? Um, yeah, in the Baylor game, I just felt like I was trying to be too much of the hero. Like, I wanted to do everything and make shots, and I was taking some force, first forceful shots. And this time, I just, you know, tried to calm down and get some layups instead of threes. Gotcha. For both guys, what changed defensively towards the maybe the end of the first half? They seemed to be um, pretty efficient offensively. A big part of it was switching on to their guards. So when we switched on, we had six feet for uh, Watson to his left hand. Um, he likes getting right, likes getting to that pull up. So we were trying to keep him to his left. Um, I think we did a better jo job of that. Um, and we did a better job rebounding. Tony, what, how did you, it looked like you had um, maybe control of your emotions is the right word, but you, you uh, were able to sort of mix in some energy, but also play within yourself. Yeah. How, how, how were you able to do that in a game that was so intense and, and kind of going back and forth there for a while in the um, first half? I mean, I've been, ar been around for a while, so I kind of knew what I was going into. Um, big game. Nebraska hasn't won in a while, so I knew they was going to be emotional. And Coach Mack told us before the game, let emotion be our friend and not let it take over us. So um, I kept that in my mind, kept taking deep breaths, and just um, rode with my guys. Two more for the student athletes. I think they went to you a couple times. Maybe a roll and a post up or something like that. In the second half, did uh, you recognize a matchup there that, that favored you, or you just? Um, that was actually our coaches recognizing what they were doing defensively. Um, so they put me in that position to switch out of some screens, catch them off guard, and I was just the one finishing. Okay. There you go. I guess, I guess Marcus, what's, what's it say about this team to win a game like this? Because it's not your style of play, and, and Nebraska sort of dictated <coughs> tempo, but. Um, we're moving along where we want to be, you know. You, 
look back at us three weeks ago when we were in Kansas City, we, we couldn't grind that uh, game out against Baylor. And now this this week we figured out how to grind it out. And, you know, it's just that time of the year where you're trying to get better because, you know, the conference play is coming up towards the end of the month. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, a lot of it was they were sending everybody back on defense, so there weren't a lot of guys around two offensive rebounds. So, uh, I mean, that was a that's a big part of that. And uh, you know, we did we shot a better percentage than them, so obviously there's more defensive rebounds to be had. Uh, but I thought our guys did it, like I said, def defensively. Uh, even the first half, they had 33 points on 35 possessions, which that's good enough to keep you in games. And uh, but I, I thought we executed our game plan really well. And obviously, Taz's foul trouble uh, concerned me, and and uh, we were able to keep keep Glenn in check, uh, even with him on the bench. How are you able to? I mean, I think they only scored two points after all the 14 turnovers. Maybe um, how are you? How are you being able to? You know, not get. So frustrated to the point where they were missing assignments and not communicating. Well, you know, we we got back on a few occasions after a turnover and got our defense put together. And you know, Nebraska, the, their plan was obviously not to be very fast paced. So <coughs> even on some of the turnovers, they weren't off to the races um, because they wanted to slow it down. I think it was a 67 or 68 possession game, which is probably by far the lowest, maybe right there with Baylor that we played this year. So, uh, and I'm just really proud of our team. You know. Like I said, Ron, I thought Ronnie's energy was <coughs> outstanding. Uh, Mitch Ballack, after a slow start, hits the huge shot out of the timeout on the out of bounds play, uh, and that really got our crowd into the game. And, and uh, you know, I thought I thought the momentum shifted there and stayed with us the rest of the game. It seemed like you, you mentioned that play off the timeout. <coughs> there were other plays. It seemed that you guys maybe just executed a little bit better in the second half. Did you get that? It, sense? We scored a couple baskets on out of bounds plays, and I don't think they did. Uh, and you know those are kind of the special teams of basketball, uh, so you you have to execute those types of things and try to stop what they're doing. And uh, you know the challenging thing is you sometimes you throw a play at the guys that you don't. You know we hadn't ran that play all year, uh, and they executed it. Timing, the spacing was perfect, and then of course Mitch has to make the shot. When you see Nebraska in that one three one come out of the timeout with a minute left, what what do you what do you want to <coughs> see from your offense? What has to happen? Well, we had prepared for it. They've used it enough this year, uh, and it's it. it you know, it's Mike must have got it from Xavier. It's what Xavier's played in the past, and with the big guy in the bottom. So we, we've seen it before, and we've worked on it in practice this week in preparation for it. So we screened the top of it and got underneath the big guy, and then you know Taz made it. You, you put the guy in the backside in a tough, impossible spot. He's either got to take Marcus or you got Mitch Ballack standing in the corner. So pick your poison. So uh, not you know certainly caught us off guard, but not to the point that we hadn't practiced it. So you know they didn't have any timeouts left. I certainly didn't want to give them one there. Would you like you know seeing your team maybe settle down a little bit sooner than it did? It's a big game, John. I mean, and, and most of these guys have not played in this game. You know, our freshmen I think were what one of nine at halftime or zero of nine, something like that at halftime, and we're only down five, and they're out in the floor a bunch, and Kyrie's sitting over next to me, and Martine sitting over next to me, and I was thrilled with where we were at. What do you? I guess how would you assess Ronnie's defense, especially on when he got switched on to Watts? It seemed like you were okay switching. Nebraska is really hard to guard when they go small, <coughs> you know, because, you know, when Copeland's making shots and Roby's making shots, obviously we know McVay can make shots, so you have to respect that. But, um, you know, we were a second late to a couple of those guys, Copeland and Roby, and, you know, Roby hit a huge one at the top of the key that cut it to one uh, inside four minutes, I think. So, you know, they're, they're hard to guard when you're rolling a, a, you know, a typical center out there. And, uh, you know, we tried to keep changing matchups the best we could to keep so – you know, Tim wouldn't have an idea of who he was going to draw the play for out of the timeout, and our guys executed it pretty well. But to Nebraska's credit, you know, they they made us pay for some some of those uh, mistakes too. Tim drew up some good stuff. Um, Marcus's shot selection at the end of the game, just to, to play him, I guess. I mean, they were all high percentage looks, and you know, he's your go-to guy. Did you like the? Well, we got him in the post a couple times. Uh, you know, obviously we didn't shoot the three-point shot well, and. Uh, for the most part, I like the looks we got, but I, I think the guys just kept moving. And the first half, we, you know, Nebraska, when you penetrate, they collapse. And when you jump in the air, 
as soon as you jump in there, they can start to get back, and that's where they're deflecting passes and stealing passes. The second half, we talked to the team, you, you need to penetrate, you need to set your feet, you need to be strong, you need to be powerful. Now when they collapse, they feel like they have to stay. Now you can spray it, now you're attacking the second side and better things happen. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't have guessed a five for 21 from the three-point line would have been good enough for us to win today, <coughs> especially with them making nine threes. Uh, but, you know, we executed some other things where we got some easy baskets. Three more for Coach. Tim and I have been friends a long time, and we're, we're going to be friends a long time from now. So, um, you know, I, I pull for his team when, when they're not playing us. Tim, I don't know, um, I don't know what the number was. You might have scored on your last nine, nine possessions. Nine. Why was this team able to settle in and make the plays when they just went up? Well, the crowd got into it. Uh, they ran out of timeouts, so they couldn't stop it. Um, and our guys, you know, our spacing was good. We executed some plays extremely well. And, and then on a couple of them, it's, you know, it's guys going to make a play. Marcus Foster misses, gets his rebound, puts it, sticks it back in. Ronnie gets deep, misses a layup. Martin comes flying in, tips it in. So, you know, second effort plays um, ended up being the difference there late in the game. And we made our free throws. Anything else? Thank you.